just raise your hand once you realize uh, th- that you're that you know that you're talking to a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Tosh show. Tosh show for show. Welcome to Tosh Show. If you're proud to be Latino, stand the fuck up. Go ahead and hit me with some of that 305 music. Mm. Hey. All right. It's a good start. You know, Eddie, I have heard through the grapevine that some people don't like the production value of our theme song. That's crazy. Now, I may shock a lot of you listeners out there, but we did not spend a lot of money on the music for Toss Show. But I am open to new suggestions, but not my uh, traditional musicians. No, no, no. This podcast is the future of entertainment. So what better than AI? to create our potential new theme song. Right. Okay. I I hear we've got a few uh, candidates to audition. Let me go ahead and hear this first one. Here you go. Josh is here. He's got tricks up his sleeve. Get ready. It's time for Josh Show Believe. It's time for Josh Show Believe. Now that sounds like a train wreck. (laughs) I don't like that one bit. It's probably the prompt. No, no, there's too many words to listen to. <laughs> All right, we got another one? Yeah. Daniel's got the questions, calls on the bark. Together, they're a team that leaves a lasting mark. They want to know who believes in ghosts. Now, that's got some energy. Mm-hmm. What I worry about is people listening to this thing first thing in the morning, and they're not ready for that Nickelback rage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That might be too much. We might be getting people spilling their coffee. Then we've got a lawsuit on our hand. (laughs) Right. We have any more? Here's play. Let's play one more. All right. Let me hear another one. Welcome to the Tosh Show where dreams come to play. No celebrities here, just everyday people. Hooray. With polka music and laughter. God, that's awful. (laughs) Here's the thing. AI is not ready. I say we stick with what we've got. Right. Tosh Show for show. That's right. Oh, man. I worry about AI every morning. It's the first thing I do. Is AI sleeping with my wife? (laughs) Yes, I guess. Is AI diddling my kids? Mm. (laughs) It's what I worry about. Right. It's just nonstop. Oh, what's AI doing? I was taking my dog for a walk. That I can get my head around. That I would enjoy. Now, I'm told, thanks to AI that this podcast is now broadcast in over 7,000 languages. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't know there were 7,000 languages. Let's hear what Tosh Show sounds like in Spanish. Creo que se refería a secuencias, Eddie. El equipo de personas que crea este programa son tres personas. Whew. Now that podcast is no longer under the category of comedy. That one's under sexy. This is why you can't ever be convicted of a crime in this country because you just be like, oh, I didn't do that. That was AI. Like, I never said those words. I don't speak fluent, beautiful Spanish. Do you want to hear me speak Chinese? Oh, man. What I wouldn't give to be able to speak whatever beautiful language that was. (laughs) Speaking of Chinese... I just finished watching uh, Shogun, which I know is Japanese, uh, or as they like to say, the Japans. But it's all it's all under the Asian umbrella, which they li- like to hold. A-, a-, a lot of them like to use umbrellas. This is what I want to, I'm not, there's no spoilers. Uh, I'm not giving any spoilers. Uh, well, I-, I will, but it's just, just episode one that I'm going to talk about. And I understand that this is set... Uh, in the, I think the 1600s or something like that, medieval period, and, and it's a, a different culture. Okay, but I like to just play it out as if it, it happened in my life today. Okay. Like, how, how would that go over? I just like the idea of me coming home from work. So, Eddie, you can play uh, the role of my wife for this, and you just say, uh, 
How was your day, honey? How was your day, honey? Oh, funny you should ask. Uh, you know how I like to uh, smart off sometimes at work? Well, I, I, um, I spoke up when I wasn't supposed to. Uh, anyway, we're going to have to kill our children, and I have to kill myself. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, speaking of AI, today's guest, a genius, a certified genius, a professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. This guy knows everything about AI. He's going to calm my nerves, hopefully, or he's going to create new worries for me at night. Also, I have to I have to mention that this was the interview that was recorded that day that Dylan had a colossal fuck up. A a brain shart heard round the world. So uh there were some audio issues, uh but the irony is that Dylan figured out how to use AI to fix his blundering buffoonery. Enjoy. My guest today is the smartest person we've had on the show, and not just because he's a foreigner with four words in his name, who also happens to have facial hair and wears glasses. Please welcome our distinguished guest, AI expert and UCLA professor, he, Dr. He, Professor He, Miss, Mr. He, what do you want? It's all good. Just okay. He is fine. Thank you. All right, He, where are you from? I'm from Belgium. Belgium. How long have you been here? Uh, I moved here in 2015. A yeah. citizen? Not yet. Soon. Maybe next year. Yeah, are you you're actually going to do it? I think I'm eligible in like a month. So, uh, oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> do you like America? Uh, yeah. I mean, it gave me a lot of opportunities. So yeah, I love it here. How often do you go back? Uh, maybe once or twice a year. It's a long trek. Yeah, yeah. Especially with a toddler, it's not so nice to travel for like 13 hours. How old is uh, your toddler? Uh, three years old. And now are you, as an academic person, do you still... Um, I mean, can you can you relate to a toddler? Do you act silly? Are you a silly dad? Oh yeah. Or are you strict? No, I'm I'm quite silly. I would say I I don't really like to be the serious professor too much. Uh -huh. it's, it's not my style. No. I mean, I feel like the reason I had children was because I wanted an excuse not to care so much about everything else. Yeah, and you cannot imagine it before it happens, right? It's kind of yeah, like you cannot prepare for this, and then suddenly everything changes. And, you know, it's also kind of interesting that you kind of, you know, you see them grow and like learn things and you're like, oh, yeah, this this is different from how AI learns. Um, you know, like you kind of get some perspective on like what is AI just from seeing a toddler learn how to walk and talk and, you know, all that stuff. Right. Um, I just thought like, oh, whatever, the world's going to shit and, and I'm going to still have to, you know, build this horrible Lego thing that he just brought. <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? No. Okay. I feel like you asked the French chef the same question. Is that a usual question? That's the first question yeah. I ask everyone. Do you believe in ghosts? Not at all. I move on. Do you believe in digital ghosts or uh, those death bots? What are those? Like some people that have lost someone oh, and then they yes. create their like this digital ghost. and it's, I'm it's, sure it's comforting. It's like watching videos and pictures from people. But so, do you think that's um, a, a good thing for the psyche as a way to move on or no? I think it's a bit creepy. I wouldn't really enjoy it. Yeah. I would rather watch a video from 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but that's always sad too, just to keep replaying that video, like John Wick. <laughs> uh, why did you leave Belgium, uh, a smart country, to come to good old dumb America? <laughs> Yeah, you know, honestly, no one wanted to give me a job as a professor in Belgium, and yeah. uh, I had to come here as a as a academic refugee. What is your actual job? Like, I'm a professor of computer science at UCLA, and I teach AI. You teach AI. Mm -hmm. Are you worried that your job will be taken? <laughs> I mean, I the teaching part. I mean, the more the more people will help teach AI, the less kind of boring stuff I have to do, and the more interesting things I can teach that are maybe less off the shelf. So I would I wouldn't mind more. AI help. How did you get into computers in the first place? I mean, I was a big nerd and still am, I guess. And I like to program. I like to play computer games. And, you know, just like any other nerd, that's how I started with computers. Do you still play the games? Um, yes. You do? <laughs> yes, yes. I wish you hadn't asked, but yeah. Like, like you put in real time? 
I, I have this rule where I, you know, maybe once a year I'll spend a weekend like binge playing mm -hmm. for like and without sleep just to kind of reset myself and like, <laughs> you know, not worry too much about being a civilized person with a real job. And, you know, I, I think everyone needs to do such a thing every once in a while, no? Is there a particular game that you care about? Last one I played was, I played Civilization Six again. Uh, I don't, you know, that game, strategy games. Yeah. I'm not a game person, and my brother, my brother uh, is a game person, and and uh, was computer programmer, and then be, created a company mm. okay. uh, for gaming, and and also for the government, and then sold it, uh -huh. and you know, he he's that kid. Yeah, uh, very much. Yeah, a world that uh, you two. I'd like to meet him. But no, he he, I was I told him that I was interviewing him, and and he was like, okay. So then he had just a couple things. He's like, bring it, bring this up. It seems like self-driving cars got to 80% good really quickly, but progress has stalled with getting it to 100%. Will we see that with AI for programming too? Like a helpful tool, but still needed someone to steer it? Or will it quickly get to the point that we don't need software engineers? Um, yeah, so I, I think it's, it's kind of a little bit of both, right? So on the one hand, yeah, like even today, your brother is probably already using generative AI to help him program. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely happening. Whether your brother will be completely replaced, I highly doubt it. I think there's, you well, know. He doesn't have a job now. He does oh, great stuff. Like, he's just doing it for fun. He does it for like six months, sells it, does something else. I mean, and so if, one of those weirdos. if it's kind of this boilerplate stuff where it's very similar to what many people have done before mm -hmm. and it's just like minor tweaks to things, then yes, AI is probably going to be able to do that because AI is really good at like finding similar things and kind of slightly modifying them. But if it's actually building like new software that does new things, that's going to be much harder for AI to achieve. You teach at UCLA? Mm -hmm. You think it's a bad idea that UCLA uh, left the Pac-12 for the Big Ten? Um, and are you aware of sports? <laughs> <laughs> I heard this is a big deal in the in the real world. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I heard about it. I, I I don't know. I am sure UCLA only makes good decisions, like hiring me and moving to the Pac-12 uh -huh. or whatever it is. Do you ever have Lonzo Ball in one of your classes? Who is that? He was a basketball player. I'm sorry. Popular a few years ago. We get student athletes in class all the time. So, but I, I don't really, I, I don't know are them. You, are you told it? Hey. <laughs> no, definitely not. Subtle debate for us here. Who is the father of artificial intelligence? Alan Turing uh, or John McCarthy? Uh, so Alan Turing was the, he was kind of the, father of computer science and he already said like let's build a, a computer that can play chess so in that sense turing is kind of the first but then mccarthy was the one that called it ai and really kind of started the field of ai so i think they yeah both get credits okay well i want you to know that there was no debate here oh. i posed my question to make you feel like you were among academics uh -huh. but nothing could be further i mean from your the question truth. was great except you said turning instead of turing yeah, yeah that was the giveaway god damn it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should read these cards before you think i didn't read it well then you're extremely <laughs> dumb i stew over these things by the way yeah yeah when's the last time you took a hearing test do you think i have a problem no nope. um yeah, never okay <laughs> <laughs> Never. Thank you. No, they always, it's like my, my kid uh, just took a hearing test and like, they, you just have to raise your hand. And I just want you to, uh, to during this interview, just raise your hand once you realize uh, th that you're, that you know that you're talking to a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I don't Are believe you? in that. You, well, know. you don't believe, you don't believe in that. Oh God. I mean, I, I'm also an idiot, you know. No, not true. Uh, what are some of the... Real dangers of AI, because you're not a doom and gloom guy with it. No, I don't like all the scary stuff of AI is going to take over the world and like Terminator will walk into this room and all of that stuff. I, I think, you know, I appreciate that some people seriously study this like as a long-term problem of like, how do we make AI behave the way we want it to behave? But I think what I'm much more concerned about is like today AI is doing pretty bad things already. And, you know, if you care too much about this kind of Terminator sci-fi AI taking over the world, then I think you're also kind of ignoring the real dangers today. And the real dangers are just believing everything that's put out in front of you? Yeah, thinking that somehow because AI is intelligent, it knows how to make decisions that are good for all of us. Well, these systems are full of biases and um, you know, AI is constantly also being used to, you know, track people, to even build kind of automated weapons. Um, AI is being used in many ways today that are quite dangerous already. And that's what I'm more concerned about. Well, yeah, that does sound worrisome. Now, now I'm back on the doom and gloom. I thought you were making me feel better about that. No, but I mean, there's drones flying around and you can tell them, find Daniel Tosh and 
shoot at Daniel Tosh. This is very doable. And so, <laughs> sorry, sorry, we can cut this. If I see a drone, which if I see a drone on my property, my instinct is to get a slingshot out. Yeah, but but now I, I think that might not be good enough. Yeah, you should you should move closer to an airport where you cannot have drones. Just safer. Move closer to an airport. Yeah, that's yeah. the fix. Oh, I'd rather be shot at. <laughs> How advanced is the cutting edge of this technology compared to what the public is aware of? Oh, I think the public is aware of the cutting edge. Anyone who has something new desperately wants to put out a press release, okay. show the world, make money. Yeah. All right. So there's nothing behind the scenes that's way scarier than what. I mean, some of these models take a while to train. Like, I'm sure OpenAI is training the next GPT, and it's probably impressive, and they know it, but they're not ready to release it yet. But as soon as they can, I'm sure they will. Isn't the greatest threat of computer learning not artificial intelligence, but rather human stupidity? Most people believe what they're told because nobody reads or bothers to. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all the magical thinking, right? People think this is magic, that it knows everything, that it can make perfect decisions for everyone. And I think this happened before, like... In the 90s, when AI started to beat world champion at chess, um, you could be like, okay, we're done, right? Like this is chess for in, in the West for thousands of years has been the game where you prove you're intelligent. And if AI can do that, then we're done. But it turned out that after that, there wasn't really all that much more that AI could do, even though this was really impressive. And so this happens over and over again, right? At some point, AI beats um, the world champion at the game of Go, which is much harder than chess. It's kind of the hardest board game you can play. Go is the hardest board game? Um, I don't know. I'm not an expert, but yeah, okay, it, okay. it's it's like this. Um, it's uh, I, I think you can think of it as like an East Asian kind of variant. Is it uh, enjoyable? Is it an enjoy fun game to play? I tried. It's way too complicated for me to uh, enjoy. So, right. yeah. Um, but some people really love it. And, you know, once you once you beat that, you're like, okay, there's no more harder game where humans are better than AI. And then you're like, oh, maybe poker. Like, we're good at bluffing and reading people. AI starts to beat the world champions at poker. Too many monkeys. You ever play that? No. What's that? Oh, it's a card game. You oh, play okay. it with your daughter. You'll love it. Uh -huh. Is she, can she count to six yet? Yes. Oh, then you're, you're in. That's okay. all you need. Yeah, yeah. We'll try. I'll, I'll look it up. How come AI can't, like, come up with something where they can click on photos of bicycles or say, I am not a robot. I don't think these things work anymore, really. Like, AI is able to crack all of these. They keep changing them all the time just to make sure that, you know, someone who's built an AI for the previous thing has to spend some time building an AI for the next thing. That's why they keep changing all the time. But I wouldn't really trust them to okay, be... Okay, so that's not going to save me. Yeah. Can you walk me through a plausible doomsday scenario where the machines take over and I'm locked out of my Rivian? <laughs> I mean... Plausible? No. I mean, I'm, I'm sure your car can break down. I think your Rivian or your Tesla will today already misbehave and not open its doors. It has nothing to do with AI, right? These That's things are just not robust. That's the problem. Do you have a smart home? Not really. I have like a Google Assistant just to, because my toddler keeps requesting music. Uh -huh. So I don't really want to like go on my phone. I just like, please play this music. So that's my only use case for AI really. Are you into all of that tech stuff or not necessarily? Um, I find most of it just makes my life harder. Uh, 100%. I mean, there were ads for like Siri and these types of assistants 10 years ago that claimed, oh, they will plan your trips. They will do this. They will do that. In the end, they never understand what I say, maybe because I have an accent. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there's a few things I know I can ask. Everything else, I'm just not even trying anymore. I always think of like these guys that, that create these billionaires, these tech guys that create these safe bunkers or whatever and there's so much tech in these homes mm -hmm. i'm like unless the day they're finished the doomsday happens and they move in then but if it sits for 10 years yeah they need seems gonna work they need some tech support in their bunker because i can't get my lights to turn on half the time with my crestron app so I, i'm just i'm just loving that mark zuckerberg thinks his entire hawaiian island is gonna work i really just want to know that 10 years after I die, my kids still have it good for a few more years. And then past that, I don't really care. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're fine. Also, I'm like not a fortune teller, right? So like, no. I think your opinion is just as valid as mine on like the future of AI, honestly. That is yeah. not true. <laughs> There's I mean, no way my opinion. I mean, something about what you said earlier of like, you know, think of like music, right? Like you can ask an AI today, like give me another song that sounds like Kanye, right? Like, or whatever. Like that's pretty easy actually, because there's a lot of 
style already there and you just do something in a similar style. If you ask AI to invent jazz or rap music or something that's completely different, that's really what it struggles with and we don't really have an idea of how to do that. So AI is really good at like more of the same. It's it's not so good at like do something fresh. And so I don't know how you think about your own comedy, but if you think you're different from all the other comedians, you're probably fine. No, <laughs> I'm not. I am not that different. Oh, all right. Well, whatever. Uh, do you have any creepy stories about how big data knows people better than they know themselves? Uh, I'm sure it happens all the time where people, you know, are outed for you know being pregnant or you know whatever just by you know someone in their home with the same IP searching for something. Right? I think this happens all the time. People, yeah, I figures things out pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know. I always see the same ads on Instagram and they're always like something that I searched on some other website. So I really feel like all the companies know exactly. You have a burner phone? No. Okay. Do you have one? No. No. <laughs> I'm not somebody that ever, I don't do things that matter. Like there's my wife. I'm never trying to keep anything from anyone. If somebody, if big brother looked in on me, they would just be like, oh, that is horribly unimpressive what yeah. he does all day long. I mean, the problem for me is I grew up in this generation, like early 2000s. The internet was only good, and by just doing more on the internet and making everything open, we would change the world and everything would be connected and better. And then like 10 years later, we realized, oh, that's not actually what's happening with the internet. But I feel like all my information is out there already. So like, what more do I save? Just porn. All the internet did flooded us with porn. See, I don't want to get in trouble here because one of my colleagues in my department at UCLA actually invented the internet. So I, I cannot really say it's it's a negative thing, I think, you know. Tell me now, Gore. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Does it ma matter whether or not uh, I accept cookies on a website? <sighs> it doesn't matter. You'll be tracked anyway. <laughs> so I should just always say accept all? I always do. You do? Yeah. I like to get the other one where it's like, oh, just the selected ones. Then I have to like go through and I start... <laughs> It just makes your life harder for no good reason. Yeah. Okay. So just accept them all yep. and move on. Can you read me the titles of your books? Oh, no. Please. Which ones did you find? I got two here. The Introduction to Lifted uh, Probabilistic Interference. Uh, inference. Well, part of the Neural Information Processing Series. Yep. And what's this What's this other one? Uh, was it the Query Processing? On, just, on uh, probabilistic these, data, yeah. Those sound fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'd love to recommend those to my wife's book club yeah so you you invited me to this podcast based on reading those books there is no way i could read those books how yeah the titles sound fancy but those things are not even really what's the current ai uh, what the current ai is doing the current ai is actually really simple the, the techniques that actually worked turned out to be way more boring and less like technically fancy than what we thought would be necessary to build AI. And that's also something that puzzles the community. Like how how are all the, the, the simple dumb things working really well and like all the clever things don't really work? Uh, it's, it's very confusing. If AI is so intelligent, how come it can't figure out that I'm not trying to type duck all the time? I swear constantly, you think it would pick up on this at some point. Yeah, I, I share your frustration. <laughs> so, so, here, so here's the thing, right? So um, <laughs> the, the AI is really impressive. Like these language models are really good at, at actually giving you answers that are really clever. But then if you actually want to integrate this technology into everything, you need to like engineer a whole bunch of stuff that somehow people are not able to do in a way that I'm happy with either. Part of the problem is like who's going to actually built this stuff like an AI engineer is so expensive for these companies okay. and they're all just trying to build the next chat GPT to have a nice big press release about it but to kind of do the dirty work of actually integrating all this stuff with all their services and so on that's actually quite complicated and expensive and you know I, I think that's why we're not actually getting the functionality we want for things we use all the time how do you think we regulate AI because if we're expecting these geriatric dipshits in Congress to wrap their heads around this. I mean, it's complicated, right? Because I think everyone's confused. I think the problem is not even them, right? If you ask a, a lawyer who studies AI regulation, even they, I think, don't really know what is going to happen here. Like AI companies are using everyone's data. They're probably like watching this video and putting it as training data into some video AI model. And the problem is that the regulation is not super clear about like what is fair use of all this data. Like obviously you have your copyright for everything you do, but then somehow companies are still using it. 
assuming that if they do it at a big enough scale, they can somehow get away with it. And then for people like me, it seems obvious that this should not be legal in a commercial setting. But then some lawyers are like, no, this seems like fair use because it's kind of like a child learning and then making fresh you know, content afterwards. And that is allowed. And I think someone will figure this out, but it's I don't think it's clear right now what is legal. Um, and, and that's just for the copyright issue. There's also just like safety stuff. You know, and I think some things should really be banned, like um, you know, using AI to look at people's resumes to decide who gets hired or filtered. I think that's oh. obviously wrong. Those tools can never really go, do a good job and be fair. Yeah, but interviews are awful. You can't, anytime you interview somebody, it's just it's who's the best liar performer to my face. Sure, sure. But then what's AI going to do? It's going to be like, oh, hire all people named Daniel, or you know, like that's so. a good start. <laughs> Now I'm aboard. <laughs> I feel like you could do a podcast just interviewing other Daniels, right? So uh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll steal that. Yeah. Fair use. Daniel on Daniel. <laughs> There's a horrific AI generated video of Will Smith eating noodles. Does AI have a problem with Will Smith? And do you think it stems from the movie I Robot? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that video though, and it gets better every year, right? There's like the early version, which is just chaos, and then recently it starts to look pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. figuring it out, it's learning. Did you ever look at those AI explicit photos of uh, Taylor Swift? No. Did you? No. Are you worried about deep fakes, all that stuff? Especially in politics, I think that's a problem. What do you think of politics in our country? You, you enjoyed it? Uh... Is it maddening? Yeah, it was very, like, I moved here in 2015, right? And the world changed very quickly after that. I felt like this was kind of a bait and switch. Like, yeah, come to America, it's great. And then, no, I, I still love it here. <laughs> See, I don't want to get in trouble here, right? No, so, don't you. I, I love it here. Do you think America is the greatest country in the world? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll say one thing positive, which is, so I'm from Belgium. My wife is from Bosnia. We cannot really live anywhere where not one of us is a foreigner, Right. Except in California, I feel like we're both here and no one cares that we have an accent and we really feel like we're both at home. Right. So I think that's really beautiful about California and the U.S. more generally. Yeah, let's just say just California. Yeah, let's be honest. I could, I yeah. could plug you two into a few different markets and you'd feel very differently. <laughs> um, is California the only place that you've lived in the United States? Uh, yes, in the United States, yes. Have you visited the whole country? I mean, so the thing is, in my field, like we have these conferences where everyone meets to talk about AI, and it's always in some the same kind of Hilton or Sheraton or whatever hotel in some <laughs> random city. So I have seen all the hotels in all the cities. Uh -huh. I wouldn't really say that I've seen the country uh -huh. that much. I mean, I love to travel around California and, you know, whatever, but... Uh, I mean, California's its own country. You've seen enough. Uh -huh. Who is the most famous Belgian uh, besides yourself? Jean-Claude Van Damme? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Did you like him growing up? I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> in the 90s, I was a teenager. So, yeah, I loved uh, the action movies. Uh -huh. um, yeah. All right. Who's got better chocolate? The Swiss? Belgium, or, of course. I mean, and are you sure about that? I mean, I cannot. Even if I thought differently, I couldn't tell you on this podcast. Saying. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things I'm not allowed to say. Do you miss your waffles or no? So waffles is only for tourists, really. Waffles are not a big deal in Belgium. Yeah. So chocolate is real. Beer is definitely real. Mm -hmm. the waffles are mostly for you guys. <laughs> oh, we appreciate it. By the way, how do you have your, when you occasionally you've, you've had a waffle, how do you have, do you have it with syrup, whipped cream, fruit? Never, it? never. I never have waffles. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I, I like a, like a French crepe, like a pancake. <laughs> that, that's my... Yeah. I don't have a French crepe machine. I brought you a waffle machine. I'll... I'll so, so oh no! Maker. Oh no! You were serious about getting me a waffle maker, but it's little cars and trucks oh. and, and different things. Uh, yeah, my daughter children, will love this. Children yeah. love love a waffle maker. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I have that. It feels mildly offensive, but you know. Is that offensive to give you a waffle maker? No, no, no. It's okay. I actually would like one. I don't think we have one, so I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. And then the next gift I got you. I love board games. And I know that, you, you know, you play chess and stuff. So this was a, but I don't like I, this game. I, I never got into it, but so everybody buys me games because they're visually pretty. Uh, what is this? Otrio? Otrio. Otrio. Okay. 
But it's like a pretty game. Oh yeah, I can you put know? this. Uh, and it's got pretty pieces that go into it. But it's like a decorative item. This looks cool. Thank you. Well, I th yeah, I'm just like yeah. I'm not gonna play this game. It's not my game. Okay. I stick with my Rummy Cub. Thank you. Rummy Cube. What do you call it, Rummy Cub or Rummy Cube? I always forget. Don't ask me. I, I don't okay. speak your language. How many languages can you speak? I speak Dutch, French, English, a little bit of German. I was born in Germany. I actually learned, yeah, I watched your interview with the chef. You were in Bopart, you said in that. Uh -huh. I was actually there. You were in Bopart? Yeah, yeah. So what happened, there was a, a workshop for, for people to discuss AI in this weird hotel castle. It's owned by the guy who invented gummy bears, Haribo gummy bears. Uh -huh. So we were just there talking about AI and then, uh, you know, there were just gummy bears everywhere and like everyone's getting <laughs> sick. Sick eating gummy bears off the table, and um, yeah, so that's why I was in both parts. We have a lot of get-togethers in German castles in the middle of nowhere to discuss about AI. It's a thing. That is the greatest thing yeah. you've ever said. <laughs> He's in a German castle eating gummy bears in both parts. With like, what are these animals that get hunted and stuffed and then put on the wall? Like a rhino, an elephant. You ever shot a gun in your life? No, I don't really want to. I've never shot one either. No, no. I had the opportunity. I was in Vietnam and they're like, here, for one dollar, shoot this machine gun. I'm like, no, thank you. You served in Vietnam? <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank I you did. for your service. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. I always find it funny when Hollywood tries to guess the future in movies. And you're just like, oh, this is such a bad attempt. Mm -hmm. You can't predict and it just looks so bad. Yeah. Do they ever come calling? Like, hey, we're trying to figure something out. No, because yeah. I'm, I'm not like a futurist, right? Like imagining interesting future world is not really my job. What's your what's your favorite uh, AI movie? See, I, I knew you were going to ask it, and I don't really have one. Oh, yeah. I, I, what, I, what I really like, I, I really enjoyed the first season of Westworld, which is not a movie, of course, mm -hmm. like the, the, the TV series. Made me so mad. I, I started like thinking, am I a robot? Like they really did. I, I watched too many episodes in a row, but like uh, it really got to me. But it, um, but it fell off the rails in the following season. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I wanted closure in season one. They won't ever do that with a good show. Just just one season, just figure it out. And clear I mean, this out. is an American thing. In Europe, everything ends after two seasons and they're like, okay, done, let's not ruin it. Not everything in Europe. You know, Great British Bake Off's been going for a hundred years. <laughs> Do you like that show or no? I do. Yeah, I, nice watch, I watch all of it, yeah. <laughs> it's very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for you to give me a handshake. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, just reach across. I haven't earned it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're, your wife, you're married? Yeah. Is she smart too? She's very smart. She's, she's smarter than me for sure, yeah. Okay. Is she really smarter than you or is that something? That it's is? obvious. We play board games. She wins every single time. Like, it's not even a competition. What if she's a cheater? Do you think there's a possibility? No, no, no. Nobody no, she would be. Game. No, no. She, she's very <laughs> principled. Yeah, much more than I am. I yeah. want both of you to take IQ tests. Okay. That's what uh, Eddie and his wife did. Eddie and I uh, did an IQ test. Do you, do you know what your IQ is? No, I never wanted to do a test. Oh, uh, Eddie and I did it. Yeah, what was it? Well, he he was smarter than me, and that's all that I cared uh -huh. about, and I was upset. Were you um, were you higher than 100? Well, you were oh, yeah, 130? Yeah, we were in the 100s. We were in the 100s. Were you 130? 30, 131. I think you were 129, and Megan was 127. Yeah. Smarter than his wife. That's, 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 I'll take that notch. I mean, I remember... In, in high school, like everyone was doing these tests for being like gifted children and so on. I felt like whenever someone was like diagnosed as gifted, it kind of messed them up in a way. And I, I was like, yeah, I don't really need to. Do you yeah. like knowing everything? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are you teaching now? Are you a professor undergrad or graduate? So both. So I teach okay. undergraduate one quarter, the other quarter graduate students. Um, but most of my job is actually research. Are you allowed to audit classes? Anymore? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, just come over. You can even do the exam. I'll grade your exam for you. You don't have to pay tuition. No, I still have nightmares about th that I didn't finish college. I had those for a long time. Now it's like, now that I'm a professor, I'm like afraid that I'm not showing up for the exam that I'm organizing myself. Like mm -hmm. I oversleep or like it ch changes. But yeah, those nightmares are still there. Are kids using AI constantly to cheat in your classes? Uh, yeah, I think it happens a lot. Um, but because a lot of stuff I do is just math, it's kind of harder to cheat. But I think if you have to kind of write things and kind of do more creative work, I think it's much easier to cheat. Um, is cheating something that you care about as a professor? I mean, in the end, I only care if people learn something. If they somehow cheat and still learn something, I guess I'm fine with it. But it's just the fairness of it that, you know, I, I feel like it's my job all do the people, time. Like, um, do the old school just looking at somebody else's work? Oh, yeah, that happens still. And that still happens? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just felt, I was like, like, oh, I don't even know what I would do anymore. I'd be so scared in college. When will you have tenure? How long? How much? Oh, I I, I got it uh, four, got year, it? four years ago. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Would you ever go to a different school or you think you're going to? Uh, no, I don't think I would want to move. I really like it here. Also living in LA, I feel really lucky. If you're going to be a professor in your field, you usually don't get to choose where you live. Okay. And you typically end up somewhere in the middle of nowhere or some other country. And I'm just really lucky that I'm in L.A., which is somehow the best place to live. During this mass exodus that they always talk about of people <laughs> leaving California. Do what? you actually know anyone who left? I feel like this is something I only read about on Twitter from yeah. people from Texas. I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never actually seen this happen. Well, I looked at just actual numbers and they like talk about like, oh, like uh, 100,000 people moved to Texas and 40,000 people from Texas moved to California. But the one thing that, that I enjoyed was just that. Highly educated people mm -hmm. are still flooding to the state of California. So I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, and also at UCLA, I think we, we're lucky. One of the reasons I love to work here at UCLA is because we get people from all over the world that want to come here to do research and science and engineering. And so, you know, it's still kind of this place that everyone wants to go to. And that's just, you know, if we get good students, that makes my life so much easier. I'm, I'm a little lazy. I don't really want to think too hard. But then if the, if the smart students come and work with me, then it makes my life very easy. Uh, the campus of UCLA has always confused me. Yeah. It's just smack dab in the middle. I know. Of, of like, of a city. It's just so weird. It's like between the, the Playboy Mansion and Bel Air and, and Beverly Hills. And yeah, it's like crazy. You ever drive around UCLA's campus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful, right? But it's just so weird. It's like, oh, I, I was just on Wilshire five seconds ago, and now here I am yeah. watching kids with backpacks like have a college experience that is unlike anything else. I'll give you a campus tour and show you, show you around whenever you're around. I appreciate that. What's the big difference between living in Belgium and living in Los Angeles, California? I mean, there's a good and a bad. So the good is that it's like everything's so convenient here. The bad thing is that in Belgium, ev everyone's kind of equally rich and poor. So you don't really feel bad about, you know, differences in wealth. And here it's kind of crazy and uncomfortable. Well, yeah. that's why you just, you stay in your lane. You don't go to those those nice areas. That's why UCLA is a bad place. It's oh, yeah. so close to insane wealth. I moved south because I'm like, this is depressing. Everyone's so rich here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agreed. How far south did you go? Uh, I live right here in uh, Mar Vista. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. You ever go to a Dodgers game? Never been. I would like to go. Do you understand baseball? <sighs> Not really. Um, but I do. What I do really enjoy, even if I don't understand the sport, I like the American entertainment in these stadiums. Like it's very different from Europe. Mm -hmm. In Europe, you're like standing in the cold, nothing happens, but the game here, it's like a big, like Disneyland circus. I, I love it. It's just fun. I mean, yeah. I, a Dodger game. Nothing's better than going to a Dodger game. It's just so fun, so pretty. Uh huh. I only, and, and I'm one of those real, real fans, like LA fans, where I just go once a year and I go for like the, the second inning to the fifth inning, then I just leave it's right in the middle. Did they ever ask you to do like the, the pitch? The, 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 the first yeah, pitch? Yeah. Aren't you like uh, eligible for that as a celebrity? I, I would definitely be eligible I feel for a first pitch. <laughs> <laughs> they have never, they've never asked. Uh, one time they had given me free tickets and they revoked them. Because like that week I said something horrible. Oh, I, yeah, you're a little bit too Sometimes. edgy to, to yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would like to throw out a first pitch. Man, I would put some smoke on that. The yeah, Dodgers, why don't you give me a ring? See if I'll throw out a first pitch. Invite me when it happens. Do I have to get like your whole family in? No, no, they, okay. they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. Well, he, I appreciate you being here again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Take care. You have very soft hands. Do I? Yeah. Pasha. All right. I want to thank Professor Yvonne Dembroek for being on the show. We learned so much. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't notice any audio glitches. Good job, Dylan. <laughs> Speaking of AI, I've been dabbling. I don't know if you guys watched. Uh, it was last week. Game two in Boston, the Miami Heat versus the Celtics. You know how they, uh, on the on the uh, floors now, they're putting um, ads? Well, I hacked it, and guess what? 
had a little fun with the people in Boston. It, only if you if you're watching. It was only up for a few seconds. That's just that's just funny right there. <laughs> Paul Pierce and his dirty shorts needing a wheelchair. <laughs> <It's> dirty shorts. <laughs> they, they, you know, I, I only had a small window to hack the system. I got in one more time, and this is what I put up. Oh, oh the catch. Oh, it stings deep. Carl, you see who's here? Ava. Ava is a... Now, some people may remember Ava from Tosh.0. She looks a little different, okay? She's very old. She's got a lot of dementia. She gets very startled, very easy. No matter what you do, you're you're sneaking up on her. <laughs> Which is good when you have little kids. Because they just, they just walk up to her and smash her in the head, and she's like, what's going on? <laughs> this, is, this is my life. What has it become? All right, we got some plugs. Carl, uh, boyswearpink.com. Check out our charitable clothing line for toddlers. I'm almost at a break-even point with that company. That's an exciting milestone. The GOAT. Big news about the GOAT. Now, May 9th is when it premieres. They're going to drop three episodes at once. But now they told me on YouTube only, May 2nd, they will drop the first episode. So a week earlier than the premiere is one episode, but then a week later, May 9th, on the premiere, there'll be three episodes available. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's go. Carl, let's run that back. The GOAT premieres May 9th, but on May 2nd, you can watch the first episode. Huh. Interesting. Only on YouTube. Mm. Then on May 9th, you can watch the first episode again on Prime, but you can also watch the second and third episode. You know, <laughs> the way television was meant to be viewed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I've got some tour dates that I'd like you to go see me at. And what else? My son's uh, bedtime story. Enjoy this little bit of animation. See you next week. Once upon a time, there were two little animals. All they wanted to do is ride on a train. But they tried to put a, put a addition in. All aboard, the captain says. They just wanted off to play. But they, everyone was playing. They were so, so happy. And then the and he, D and but there are two little penguins okay. that helped them. But the penguins would do away with the, the penguin was sick. That was like one of so those. So somebody oh, okay. helped them. What? This is like one of those movies at the end where it ends, the credits roll, and then there's like some extra little scenes before the movie finishes. Like Top of Madrid? I don't know. Are there other extra scenes in Top Gun Maverick? Yes. All right, then yes, like Top Gun Maverick. And the only story at Days Land, and then they went to Freak the end. Okay. But okay. they always wanted to know by the end. Tosh Show. Tosh Show. Tosh Show for show.